Hey everybody, and welcome back to my channel for another one real quick. If you haven't done so, please, please, please make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button and click that notification bell so that way you will be notified any and every time I post another video. And let's get right into it because this space is happening and it's happening quick. There's a lot of mass adoption happening. There's a lot of liquidity and there's a lot of utility for these cryptos. So let's get right into it. A recent article from Cointelegraph says, Robinhood COO praises Shiba Inu as a crypto wallet waitlist grows to 1.6 million. It says, pressure is mounting for Robinhood to list one of the most popular meme coins on the market. And the wait list for the platform's crypto wallet has grown to 1.6 million. At this point, I don't know what Robinhood is doing. Um, you know, they just, they need to go ahead and list this meme coin. And I hate to say it, meme coin, it is a meme coin because that's how it started. But now it has liquidity, utility, and mass adoption. Um, it went from 1 million customers wanting it online and on, on their uh, crypto exchange and now to 1.6 million. Anticipated, anticipation is rising with this coin because it's something that's being widely adopted. Um, it's no longer, um, excuse, you know, excuse my phrase, a shit coin, um, but it is what it is. Like there's there, like there's no stop in this train. It says here, Robinhood uh, COO Kristen Brown has praised the Shiba Inu community, but um, but said safely was the platform's priority over the short term gain of listing new tokens. Here's the thing: back when uh, they listed Dogecoin, uh, they made up most they made up most of their profit just by people actually investing in Dogecoin itself. So as a po so now you have another community coming in, um, you know, Shiba in the community saying that they want um, the Shiba Inu token. And what better way of actually giving the community what they want instead of you actually picking and choosing winners? There's that phrase again. It's always something going on about um, a top entity picking and choosing its winners, whereas you let the you let the customers pick and choose the winners. I get it. We're in a world where you know. Robinhood is still a business at the end of the day. It has to make money. But at the same time, if you listen to the people, the people will actually still make you money. Because after all, if you don't list it, me and everybody else is going to go somewhere else and give our money to another exchange and actually invest in it, thus making you left behind. So if you're listening, um, Robinhood, COO, go ahead and list it. Because the thing is... As businesses get, you know, get older and get wealthier and get bigger, businesses tend to forget who actually make them that big. It's not your money. It's the retail investor who makes you big because you, you're making them happy and, them, and, they're, and they're constantly going back and giving you their money. So without them giving you their money, how do you think that you're going to survive off of... Um, loans, government assistance. I get it. It's it's your business. You can do what you want. But just don't forget at the end of the day, the small retailers is what actually made um, businesses who they are today. So just don't forget that. And I would just say, just go ahead and list it because what do you have to lose? There's, there's, there's going to be liquidity there. AMC's already thinking about adopting Shiba Inu. It's already on, you know, the other exchanges. So what's going to make your exchange different from, you know, Coinbase's, the Binance US's, the BitTrues? What's going to make yours different? The upholds. So just go ahead and list it. People, you already have um, a Robinhood ecosystem around the people that already have stocks for you, you know, invested from your platform. You might as well just go ahead and do it. You, got, you know, there's people that I talk to all the time that says, um, I got money plowed up on Robinhood's platform. I'm just waiting for XRP to be relisted or I'm just waiting for Shiba Inu to be listed. Like you already have people already in your ecosystem. You might as well just click the button. Push a button. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just saying, but yeah, just go ahead and just click it. And then, you know, that's it. But it, uh, it goes on by saying, one of my favorite things is seeing the community around these coins really engage with us and let us know what they want. Yeah, like, we, the people, have been saying that we've been wanting Shiba Inu on Robinhood for a long time. Uh, but then it goes off by saying, 
However, um, Brown would not be drawn on whether the American stock and crypto trading app would list Shiba Inu. Shiba is currently the 11th largest cryptocurrency with a market capitalization of $30 billion. Now, don't get it twisted, folks. $30 billion, that's a lot. Um, that's a lot. That's not, I mean, you know, it's not a lot compared to the other cryptos, but I want to say Cardano's blockchain was like a $50 billion right now. Um, so it's competing with top tier cryptocurrency. So it's not like it's not just some small, uh, chain coin now. It's, it's, it's actually considered a big dog now. Um, it's not a, a Yorkie, it's not a Shih Tzu, it's kind of like a, a Rockwell or a Pitbull now. Um, love them. But you know, this is something, it's not, a, put it this way, the Shiba Inu Token is, is no longer a Shiba Inu token. Like it has a big bark and it has a big bite. So thirty billion. That's not something too um, high. That's a large number. Um, here it then goes off by saying, um, "Our strategy is different than a lot of other players out there. We're racing to list. Who are racing to list as many assets as possible right now? We think that the short. Okay, and then that's the then that's the quote. But yeah, I mean." Yeah, it's just just listed um, because what harm can what harm will it do for you? You know, you know to list it. It's actually going to do you more harm to not list the Shiba Inu token versus list uh, versus listing it because you got your customers already in the ecosystem who want you to list it. So yeah, you just might as well just go ahead and list it. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's already integrated in your system. I mean, I get it. Um, cause, cause it's an ERC twenty token, and anytime you have an ERC twenty token, that's already connected to the Ethereum blockchain, cause it's under Ethereum. And I don't see um, Ethereum stopping no time soon. Um, I don't, I don't see it. As long as Ethereum's going up, the rest of the ERC twenty tokens are actually going to go up, cause you know when Bitcoin goes up, it follows. You know the market follows. When Ethereum goes up, the market follows, and its ERC twenty tokens follow. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and list it. 1.6 million, you know, people who are actually wanting it now that are actually on the wait list is actually saying, go ahead and list it. It's getting to the point to where it's just like, okay, you know, people want it. Now, is this like a power thing now? Um, are you, are you like, at what point, you know, do people, um, like at what number are you going to be like, okay, we got enough people that keep begging us to do it. Like at this point, I'm starting to think like it's a power thing. And then when it comes to that, I feel like companies lose their focus because you should have actually added it when it was over a hundred and something thousand people who actually wanted it on your platform. And I can guarantee you that those people that actually wanted it on your platform probably went elsewhere or probably had help from people to actually go find it elsewhere. So like your window's closing, like your window's like 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 this now, but it's getting to this soon. So you need to go ahead and get it. But that's all I got to say about that rant. We're going to go to the right next. We're going to go right to the next one. Um, this is something that I that I keep preaching about and, and I'm going to keep preaching about till I'm blue in the face. Utility, liquidity, and mass adoption. And mass adoption. This is what seems like is actually going on right now in uh, Zimbabwe. Um, this is super exciting. Um, it says here, a recent article from Cointelegraph says, Zimbabwe minister signals CBDC interest um, um you know, for Bitcoin adoption rumors, even though, you know, there's Bitcoin, you know, adoption rumors. And it says, so the minister clarified that Zimbabwe is not considering the adoption of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. That's the thing. When it comes to that, if you have a minister come out and say something like that, um, watch what they do and not what they say. It's really important because this, this tactic is old. People people did that all the time. Uh, you had J.P. Morgan chase um, uh, Jamie Dimon uh, back uh, three years ago. Exactly. No, maybe it's about 2017. And that, there's that magic year, 2017. Or, or could have been mid 2018. Said Bitcoin is a scam. I'm gonna fire any of my employees who uh, say that they did be in doubt, did you know, did be their hands in Bitcoin or whatnot. But then. Months to a year later, they're creating their own JPM coin on the uh, on the quorum 
you know, blockchain and actually praise um, Ethereum. So it's one of those things. It's like this is a tactic. Um, me being in a space for a long time and me actually being able to connect the dots when you know there's no dots to connect because that's why I'm here. I'm here to actually educate you on how to connect the dots for yourself, show you what I see and see how you actually interpret it. But when I hear this type of mess, this tells me um, that it's coming. Um, because here's the thing, you can't have a CBDC and not use one of the current blockchains. You can make your own blockchain, but I can guarantee you that it won't help because governments actually adopt. They don't uh, create or invent. They actually adopt a, a, you know, a, current, a, um, a current innovation that's already been created. There's no way that the people, and, like, and then it has to actually correlate with other blockchains um, there's no way that you can actually create your own CBDC. I mean, there's a way you can create it, but but there but it has to actually be congruent with other blockchains and other cryptocurrencies. And you actually creating your own CBDC, it's not going to work. You just might as well just use the XRPL, uh, the Cardano blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain, the you know the Ethereum blockchain, the Algo blockchain. You know, there's a lot of blockchains out there that have you know, cross-border payment remittance-like remittance uh, features that uh, have low transaction times and it instant settlements. But just you creating your own CBDC and then not saying what blockchain is going to be on, I don't know how that's going to work for you. But let us know, <laughs> let us know how that's going to work because like I said, watch what they say, watch what they do and not what they say. But it goes off by saying Zimbabwe's Minister of Information uh, publicly dismissed ongoing rumors about the countries considering the adoption of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Rather, the minister clarified that the government of Zimbabwe is keen to experiment with central bank digital currencies. That's still cryptocurrency. <laughs> I just it just it just completely mind is is mind blowing. A CBDC stands for Central Bank Digital Currency, and it's digital. It's digital. Cryptocurrency is digital. A CBDC is a cryptocurrency, but it's still considered a stable coin that allows you to transact, and it's a one to one ratio of what that can, of what that particular government's dollar is like, like like um like a stable coin. Uh, like a stable coin, the USDC, I believe that's actually going to be a CBDC once regulation comes out and once it's actually clear on what stable coins can actually do. But that is just allows me to transact my one US dollar to one USDC. It's a, it's a ratio of one to one and it's pegged to the US dollar. It does not go up and it should not go down. That's what a CBDC is. It's just a digital, it's just a digital dollar of that particular country's uh, currency. That's it. It says that the rumor of Zimbabwe's crypto adoption was sparked based on numerous reports quoting um, one person by the name of Charles Wakiti. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Permanent security of the president's office saying that the government was in talks with the private sector business to help induce cryptocurrency in the country. So, oh, so you're just trying to cover up your tracks. Uh, because there's actually someone from the inside that actually said that it was going to happen, but the information came out before you could actually say it. That's what that is. It's too late. You know, don't lie to us. Just go ahead and say, oh, yeah, you called us. Yeah, we're thinking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and actually adopting it and actually, you know, trying to create a CBDC on one of the blockchains. But I'm going to just go ahead and cover that up because I don't want the hype to, you know, to, you know, to continue to go and, and the market to continue to go up before we actually get into it. Just say that that actually was a leak and it came out instead of just actually lying because either way it goes, we're going to find out whether it's not it's a week later or a month later or, you know, a year later. The thing is, the Internet keeps every, you know, the Internet is the Internet. Stuff is going to be saved on the Internet. Like once you just said this lie and I'm saying it and I'm calling the spade a spade, this is a lie. Like people are going to come back to this video or, you know, to, um, to another video and say, well, you said you weren't going to do this, but now you're actually, you know, trying to invest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. That's the same way that JP Morgan Chase did. And, um, you know, JP, um, with the JPM coin, like 
Don't lie because the stuff is going to come back up and be like, okay, so now you can't be trusted. So again, when it comes to that, never trust what they say, but trust what they do. Watch what they do and not what they say. It's very, very, very important about that. Then it says here, uh, the government would like to assure that the nation, us as the government would like to assure that the nation is not considering introducing another currency in the, you know, the economy, a report in some section of the media, our local currency in the Zimbabwe dollar and not cryptocurrency. Well, here's the thing. Um, if you, because I did another article about this if, uh, maybe like a week ago, um, but if you are not thinking about doing this, well, if you are thinking about doing this and you're saying that you're not to the media, but you're turning around behind closed doors and actually doing it, that's one thing. But if you but if you decide not to do it in this entirely, then you're gonna get left behind. Like there's no way to put it. This world is going digital. It's not stopping. It's not stopping for you. It's not stopping for me. It's not stopping for anybody that doesn't like it. It's not even stopping for the people that do like it. But here's the thing: it's going. You need to get on this train or not, because it's highly imperative that you understand what blockchain and what other cryptocurrencies can do for the future. And how it actually, and how actually, it's going to actually solidify itself in the world as we know it right now. It's coming, whether you like it or not. There's nothing you and I can do about it, and that's it. Um, moreover, the minister clarified that the government of Zimbabwe is following footsteps of other countries by studying CBDC as opposed to cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, and other derivatives, and. What do people not understand and what do people not get that in order to have a CBDC, it needs to be on the blockchain. It needs to be on the blockchain that actually uh, utilizes CBDCs. And right now, the only blockchains that I know of that actually use CBDCs, that actually have a blueprint and a white paper for CBDCs, is the XRPL. Um, uh, you have the Cardano blockchain. Um, you have... Um, I lost my train of thought. You have the XRPL ledger. You have the Cardano blockchain. You have the Stellar uh, blockchain. And I believe there's another one that I can't think of off the top of my head. But right there, those are the three that I actually have and actually, you know, have white papers of CBDCs. Like, but you still would need to utilize the native assets of those blockchains. So regardless of what you say, you can't use a blockchain and not utilize their native asset. Period. Anybody who tells you that you need um, or that you can't have a blockchain and still create CBDC is lying. Like that's they don't understand the fundamentals of cryptocurrency in the whole period. And you should not listen to them. You have to have um, you have to use the native asset and that particular blockchain if you want to utilize a CBDC. Um, but if you don't and if you found a way, that's great. You're a genius. You should be the next the next. Um, I don't know. I don't know the next frenzy or whatever, but just right now, if you're thinking about CBDC, you're going to have to use a blockchain. And if you try to create your own blockchain, it's not going to work as well as the current existing blockchain is because then you have to worry about hacks, double spins, whether or not the, um, the blockchain is actually, you know, um, secure. Like, is it going to be part of the private sector? Like, you have to think about all of that stuff. Whereas you have an 11 year old cryptocurrency or 10 year, 10, 10 year old cryptocurrency that doesn't have a um, hack in it or a nine year old cryptocurrency or eight year olds that doesn't have a hack in it, no double spins, fast transactions, fast settlement times, you know, um, that's permissionless, that's actually cheaper um, to actually own it right now and actually, you know, not have to worry about any slow settlement times or, um, that can go up to 1500 transactions per sections 1500 transactions per second and possibly go up to a million transactions per second now i didn't just name cardano or xrp but i named bitcoin also in that also and um stellar um lumens in that also but it's just one of those things that you have to understand like countries around zimbabwe are working on a better path you know, to cryptocurrencies and blockchain as a whole, because they know where it's going. And if you're sitting here telling me that um, you're not thinking about it right now, well, when are you going to think about it? Because at the time that you decide to actually say, yes, let's go, it's going to be too late. And I'm only saying that with love. I'm not saying that with hate. I'm not hating on the country. I'm not hating on the cryptocurrency. 
I tell you all the time, folks, if it's good, if, if it's bad, I'm going to tell you the facts. I'm going to tell you my thought process behind it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to straight tell it like it is because this country will be left behind. I don't want to see it be left behind because there's a lot of things going on in Zimbabwe and other countries. But just do your due, please do your due, you know, due diligence. And um, when it comes to that, just don't get left behind. Because Bitcoin itself is taking off and it's not caring who's on and who's off. And cryptocurrency in a whole is changing everyone's lives. Banking be unbanked. Um, so, and it's connecting worlds that necessarily weren't able to be connected. But that was my rant on. I'm going to move straight over to this one. I'm a I'm an Apple fanboy. So when I heard this news yesterday on Squat Box and I was actually looking at that interview, I'm like, huh. Something is about to happen. It's just the way, like other content creators say, um, it's their body language. It's the way that they're talking is how they're spaced out. Like if they're with their arms crossed or if they're leaning in or if they're looking or smiling, you know, it's their body language. And what everything Tim Cook said to me, it goes back for me to actually telling you, watch what they do and not what they say. It's all smoke and mirrors when it comes to... The big wigs talking about cryptocurrency because they know any slip up that they say can be used against them and crypto will skyrocket. But let's get right into this one. This is, I wouldn't necessarily say this is one of the biggest news. Well, yeah, this is a big news because I'm an Apple fanboy. I have Apple everything and you can't tell me anything. I'm I'm invested into their ecosystem. So I'm going to connect the dots and hopefully just bear with me if you made it you know, to this one. Just listen this out. Uh, a recent article from CNBC, Tim Cook says he owns cryptocurrency and he's been interested in it for a while. You don't say. This goes all the way back to when the Apple Card was first released. I want to say the Apple Card was released back in 2018 maybe? So the Apple Card was released in 2018, and one of the things in their um, subheading was um, that you cannot purchase cryptocurrency. You cannot purchase cryptocurrency um, with the Apple Card. And I'm like, well, why would they say that? I mean, that's the latest, hottest craze. Why would they say that? You can do it anywhere else. It would be a fee, but you can do it anywhere else. Then I got to thinking, and then there was a there was a tweet back then where it was um, one of the programs, I don't remember off the top of my head, was connected to Apple and that they were buying like $1.6 billion worth, but you couldn't find this tweet anywhere else. It was just, it was just a random tweet Apple, the Apple card came, after the Apple card came out. But this is interesting. It says, Apple CEO Tim Cook said he personally owns crypto after he was asked at the New York Times deal book conference if he owns Bitcoin or Ethereum. And here's this, and here's what he says. I do. I think it's reasonable to own it as a part of diverse portfolio. Cook told Andrew Ross in an interview that or Tuesday. I'm not giving anyone investment advice, by the way. Cook said that he had been interested in cryptocurrency for a while and that he had been researching the topic. That is the key takeaway. You've been researching the topic. So my thing is, I'm not going to, like if I'm, a business owner and I want something for my company, I'm going to invest in what I want to release to my company first. I'm going to, you know, have it for maybe like a year, two years. And this correlates with the Apple card. I'm going to have it for a year or two years and see how I like it to make sure I don't have any slip ups to make sure it's actually legitimate. And um, I'm going to buy, let's say I buy $1.6 billion worth of crypto because it actually did go up around this time where the rumor was going on. Uh, Let's make that clear. Crypto actually did go up. Bitcoin actually did go up. Ethereum actually did go up around this rumor of 1.6 billion. I think it was like 1.2 billion that Apple was actually investing in cryptocurrency. So that did go up. But me back to being the owner. Let's say I was the owner, right? And I wanted to actually see how it worked. Yes, I'm going to invest in it first and make sure that it's safe for me to actually disperse it out to any of of my retail small investors or my big wig retail investors who are actually my customers. 
So I'm going to invest in it, see, see if I like it. And if I like it, then I'm going to eventually say, OK, well, let's make an ecosystem developed around it, maybe like a wallet or something, uh, maybe like a partnership with one of the biggest um, exchanges out there, Coinbase, right? Hear me out. And I say that because uh, Coinbase just recently had like a debt, you know, just created a, a debit card. And now you can actually purchase crypto via Apple Pay. Apple Pay is a patent and a brand that Apple um, created specifically to, you know, for NFC payments. But here's the thing. Apple can reject or deny whether or not a company can use Apple Pay to, you know, for um, purchase goods or services. But now Apple actually granted Coinbase the availability and the permission for us to buy crypto via Apple Pay, via Apple's patent that they specifically designed for touchless and digital payments. I think them actually bringing together and allowing Coinbase to do Apple Pay is another step into Apple creating their own um uh, cryptocurrency wallet, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, uh, XLM, Litecoin, um, Algo. Like, I'm sorry if I didn't name all the ones that you like, but but I'm just I'm just tossing them out there. But hear me out. This is the next step in actually Apple integrating um, cryptocurrency. Just think about it. If the dots are not there for you, it's okay. I'm here to connect those dots. Just that is insane. This will happen. Do you honestly think a technology company, a digital technology company that, um, invents the new wheel, um, reinvents the phone, like changes the game in phone. Do you honestly believe do you honestly believe that this man is sitting here um, and not thinking about adding bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to apple like samsung already has a samsung wallet that actually lets you hold your private keys and actually has a cryptocurrency wallet apple did not want to be the first but i can guarantee you they will be the next phone company or uh, technology company that actually will do that because it's just never ending. Like that just doesn't make sense to me. And I'm sorry, you can find me all you want to. Let me know what you feel like in the comments below. But I personally think that that was that partnership with Coinbase and Apple's Apple Pay. That was the next step in seeing if cryptocurrency will work with their platform. And we know cryptocurrency will work with their platform because it's tech. Anything tech is anything Apple, and I mean that. Mark my words, Apple will actually have a cryptocurrency wallet soon. But that's just my take on it. That's my thoughts on it. You can't tell me otherwise. They wouldn't have. Um, and here it goes. It says here, Cook also rejects the possibility of Apple buying cryptocurrency with corporate fund as an investment. Watch. That doesn't matter. His words do not matter. Their actions says it all. Why would you pair with Coinbase to do Apple Pay to do nothing else? That doesn't make sense. But that's my take on it. Um, it says here, it says he rejected the possibility of buying cryptocurrency. So he rejected. Just because somebody rejects that... The, that's not a definite yes. That's not a definite, a definite no. Being a millionaire, you find, and being a head of a company, a tech company, you find ways to get around answering questions. You just do. Um, then it goes off by talking about um, what his shares and stuff like that. And I, nobody cares about that. But um, it says here, Apple doesn't currently have any cryptocurrency products or services. But it allows crypto wallet apps on its iPhone app store. Um, and then it says, Apple has released financial services through wallet, which includes countless Apple per Pay, per to -per payments, and Apple cur credit card. So it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You have all this peer to peer software. You have, you have Apple Cash. You have Apple Pay. And then you got Coinbase and Apple Pay printing together. So it's inevitable. It is what it is with this one. And 
I'm excited. It's this is no longer of um when. No, this is this is no longer of if, but it's a matter of when. But that's my rant on it. Um that's my rant on it for today. Um we're gonna go over this market really quick here. Let's see. We got 2.9 trillion going on right now. Uh it's getting it's getting closer and closer and closer. 2.9 trillion. Like I want to say it got down to three, but that was I wasn't I must have missed it. But right now we got Bitcoin at 66,753, Ethereum at 4,737, Binance Coin at 650. Uh, we got Solana at $242. Look at that Cardano at two dollars and twenty three cents, XRP at a dollar twenty five. Uh, we got Polkadot at fifty one dollars and sixty six cents. We got Dogecoin at twenty seven cents. Uh, we got Shiba Inu at still under a penny. We got Luna at fifty one dollars at forty six cents. Avalanche at ninety three dollars and forty five cents. Litecoin at two hundred and seventy eight dollars and twenty one cents. So I have some. So that's great. The market is going up. That's super exciting. I cannot wait to see what happens when it hits that three trillion mark. I'm super excited. I wanted to tell y'all this, but I finally got my first NFT. Um, it's it's a start. Um, I'm thinking about showing y'all what it looks like on my Twitter. I might drop my Twitter link in the comments below. And but if you made it this far, make sure you um, subscribe. Um, actually, follow me on Twitter. Um, if I drop the link below, I'm still thinking about dropping the link below. But if you haven't watched my video already, I please highly suggest that you do so. My recent video that I just posted, it should be popping up now. Please make sure you click on it. It's very exciting. And then it's me and it's yours truly. Um, but as always, uh, let me know what you feel in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, stay focused, stay locked in. Peace. Peace.